There we are. Good afternoon, good morning, or whatever time zone you're in. Hi there. Hey, Judy's here. Hi, Judy. Um, oh. All right. So um, I don't know if you read the email that I sent out a couple of days ago <laughs> about my confusion or lack of knowing where this was going. Uh, but <laughs> uh, this morning, I was, uh, again, for the 500th time, reading the, the couple of paragraphs that we're supposed to be talking about today. And all of a sudden, I heard, don't you think Jesus has, has, has the talent for sarcasm? Say that again, please. Don't you, <laughs> don't you believe that Jesus has the talent for sarcasm? <laughs> and I went, and I reread it again, and I'll, oh, okay. Really? Really, okay. there we go. All right, so uh, it's, it's not vicious sarcasm. It's just sarcasm, okay. gentle sarcasm. And reading it with that word in my mind, I went, oh, now I get it. it makes perfect sense to me. We have to read it with sarcasm. Well, well just, just take it with a grain of salt, shall we say. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, Carolyn, hi there. <laughs> what, what? Carolyn, we... There, oh, there, there you are. Go. There you are. Hi. Okay. You can only see your torso on the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go ahead and, um, and read the, uh, the couple of pages that we have here. Let's see. What's that? Look what I, look what I, how I discovered I could do. Okay. Hey, hey. Hey, look at that. So, um, oh, I read it, but what the heck, what page is it? It's, it's the Manual for Teachers, Chapter 5, back of the book. Yeah, I'm in the back of the book. Chapter 5, or How is Healing Accomplished is the name of the chapter. What are you doing? Are you it's doing? also on your screen right now as well, so. Where my level of confusion came last year is okay, uh, last, last week is my book is so ancient. It doesn't have a chapter. So I kept looking for chapters. But I'm on board right oh, now. I've got I was healing accomplished. I had it copied with a sticker. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so who wants to read the first two paragraphs? Let's put it that way. I'll start because I okay. got to get myself here. I have read it when I got your letter, but anyway. Okay, so... Thank okay. you. Sarcasm. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, that's, that's hard. The perceived purpose of sickness, healing is accomplished the instant the sufferer. Well, no, let, let, let's go to the, the first little little paragraph just above okay. that. Okay. Go ahead. So this, it's only a sentence? Uh, two sentences, yeah. Mm -hmm. Healing involves an understanding of what the illusion of a sickness is for. Healing is impossible without this. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let's think about that for a second. And this is where, this is where I heard the word sarcasm. Um, healing involves an understanding of what the illusion of sickness is for. <clears throat> In other words, we have to. Oh, excuse me, just a second. <clears throat> we have to understand what we have created sickness for not what the reality of sickness is but what we have created sickness for healing is impossible without the understanding of what this is okay okay carolyn go ahead keep going that's all right somebody else can if you like no you go ahead okay you're good I just have to say, I, I was reading in, in um, James's new book, and what I was reading today was about sickness and healing and illusion, and it fitted right in with this, just, you know, anyway. Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> the perceived purpose of sickness. Okay, perceived purpose of sickness. Remember, that that's very important, that word perceived. Okay, go ahead. Healing is accomplished. The instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain, who would choose suffering unless he thought it brought him something and something of value to him? He must think it is a small price to pay for something of greater worth, for sickness is an election, a decision. It's the choice of weakness in the mistaken conviction that it is strength. When this occurs, 
real strength is seen as a threat and health as danger. Sickness is a method conceived in madness for placing God's son on his father's throne. God is seen as outside, fierce and powerful, eager to keep all power for himself. Only by his death can he be conquered by his son. Only by God's death can God be conquered by us, Je his son. Or Jesus. No, well, no, what? Us. no, 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 no just, let's, let's hold it right there. The sickness is a method conceived in madness for placing God's son on his father's throne. In other words, if we have sickness, if we have sickness as a reality, quote unquote, then what we are asking sickness to do is to replace God's power and on his throne and put us there instead, putting, putting, putting us, the perceived us on God's throne. God is seen as outside, fierce, and powerful. Eager and we're, to keep being all... taught, we're being taught that we are the same as God. We are God. We, we are better than God because we can, we can kill ourselves. God, God can't even do that. I mean, we can, we can make ourselves sick and by in, in sickness, the, by, by sickness, we create our own idea of death. And in that way, we are more, we are superior to God. We are powerful. We are more powerful than God is because only by God's death, us killing him, can he be conquered by us, his son. God is love. God is love. How, how can how can that be more powerful than than us if we have the ability to kill ourselves well i mean again okay. think sarcasm all right think but sarcasm. i understand this without sarcasm i know exactly what it's saying so yeah. i'll share whenever go ahead when we're done no 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 this is good go ahead all right so I've had cancer since 2017. And when, uh, this is a little hard to explain, but when I have to take care of my physical body, get chemo, whatever, I feel there's a feeling of safety in a way where I can say to somebody, oh, I can't drive out to Boston to visit you because I have treatments I have to attend to. It gives me an excuse to not participate when I can't just say, I don't want to. And it, it, it's something from the time I was a child, I wanted attention because I wasn't getting it. Um, so that, you know, I remember doing something when I was in first grade to get my mother to pay attention to me. Um, yeah, I, I, anyway. So yeah, it has, it has provided excuses for me. This is really hard to admit, but it's also good because I've been in the middle of realizing it and, you know, doing something different. It has, it has given you power over love. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Right. Perceived. But I get people to visit me too out here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It has given us perceived power over love. Right. And by perceived power over love also means perceived power over God. Because if 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 I am sick and I continue to make myself sick and see myself as sick, I have conquered God's will. The ego has done that. That is what ego that is what ego is trying to do with all of this is 
try to kill God, put us on the that throne of power that we think God is sitting on and is ruling us and controlling us and saying that we are his subjects and we are under his control. Mm -hmm. And all that, all that, that artificial definition of love that we have come up with in this, in this illusion, in this dream. The artificial dream of hateful love. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Judy. Hi. Hi. Well, what I also wish to add as a component to this is that my body experiences glitches. My body experiences deterioration. I am only trying to usurp God's will for me if I concentrate on the egoic side of that. If I just follow the program or what needs to be done without trying to out see it, out predict it, out anything it, but just accept, I can't go to Boston right now because truly I have a treatment on Wednesday. So, you know, although it's a convenient excuse, it also happens to be what's happening in the third dimension. I only usurp God from my life if I take the trust away if I tried to control the outcome. So um, is that making any sense? Because um, our, our bodies will be going through crap. I mean, let's face it, even Jesus's physical body, body did not, you know, is, is not physically here. It, they do deteriorate. Um, well, that, that's if we believe that the, 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 the reality <laughs> of our the reality of our existence here is real. Well, I'm just talking about in the third dimension, in what's going on here. And if mm -hmm. I fight it, then I'm resisting God's will for me of perfect happiness. If I, I just the key word it here is perceived. Oh yeah. Oh, I understand. I, I know that. But I I don't wanting to make my body wrong because it's had cancer, because it has this, because it has that. It's something that for whatever reason in this dimension I'm going, seem to be going through, uh, and I turn it over. I don't try to cure it. I just turn it over and follow the, follow the prompts as Ricky would say, but what needs to be done. And I just thought that was an important thing so that we can take the guilt of any physicality um, off the shelf today. That's all. Right, there, there is no guilt in, in, in what we are doing here. Yes. We accept that which we perceive mm -hmm. and assign to it ourselves. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Morning, Linda. Hello. Hello, everyone. All right. Let's uh, let's go on to the second paragraph. You want me to continue it? Uh, let's, let's get to, someone else want to take it. Oops, I will if you want. Go ahead. So we are, at, no. and what? And what in this insane conviction? Okay. And what in this insane conviction does healing stand for? It symbolizes the defeat of God's son and the triumph of his father over him. It represents the ultimate defiance in a direct form which the son of God is forced to recognize. Okay, let's stop right there. Let's let's go back and really, really see where, where, where this insane conviction is. And what in this insane conviction does healing stand for? This is the this is the insane definition of healing, not the not the healing in purpose and what we as teachers of God are here for. This is what the egos and definition of healing is okay it symbolizes the defeat of god's son and the triumph of his father over him again this is the insane idea this insane symbolism the defeat of god's son god's power over us and the triumph of his father so 
we are we if we are perceiving something that needs healing and we do not allow the healing of love to take to take place mm. we are saying that god if it's if god's going to heal us then he's he's the boss he's controlling us he's dominating over us he's triumphing over us and we are helpless against him we are victims of god even in the idea of the healing okay keep going okay i have experienced healing just i'm not reading of course yes um so i know it's definitely a choice mm -hmm. okay so did i say it represents no i did read that <laughs> no, <go> it's ahead. <laughs> It stands for all that he would hide from. Oh, start, start with it represents. Go ahead. Start, okay. Do that, do it that represents the ultimate defiance in a direct form, which the Son of God <coughs> is forced to recognize. Forced to recognize. We are being forced to recognize the healing. We have. To, we don't want that. We're just. We're doing it against our quote will. Okay. Keep going. It stands for all that he would hide from himself to protect his light. Quote, unquote. If he is healed, he is responsible for his thoughts. Uh -huh. <laughs> and if he is responsible for his thoughts, he will be killed to prove to him how weak and pitiful he is. There we go. But death, he, death is going to prove how useless God's love is. Hmm. Yeah, I've thought about that. But what if he, he chooses, excuse me? Go ahead. Okay. But if he chooses death himself, his weakness is his strength. Uh huh. Yeah. Now has he given himself what God would give to him? and thus entirely usurped the throne of his creator. Wow. Mm -hmm. If he chooses death himself, if I'm one of those, all right, God, I don't care what you say, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. It's my choice. Yep. That, and by doing that, I've taken away in the ego's mind, I've taken away God's power. I've taken away the infinity of God's creation. I proved God's creation wrong because I die. And by being, by standing in that and seeing that as my quote, truth, I am here to, un to be witness to the idea that God's love is useless because I'm going to die anyway right that's what the ego that's how the ego is going to prove this dream real and it's in its own mind leslie you're leaning in i see you leaning into a, to a comment what, what do you have to say well i i can see i can see this for myself how it's true uh so you know, I'm looking to correct it in my in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in the light, I'll call it, in 2012, one of the thing I I got some messages, and one of them is, "We are unlimited," and this does not sickness doesn't. I'm speaking for myself. I can't speak for anybody else, but it doesn't. What was I? Where was I going? Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Sorry. Infinite love. Yeah. Infinite so love. Doesn't, uh, incorporate uh, unlimited. Sickness is a limitation. To yes. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is. And that's what he's saying here in these two paragraphs. We sickness is us 
putting a limitation on what we think is God's power over us. If I could be sick, how powerful can God be? Right? Mm. How, 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 how can this possibly be a, a thing that I need to be believing when I can prove that I can die? All I have to do is die. Mm -hmm. Easy. Easy. I can think it's going to happen. I don't even have to do anything about it. It's oh, going to happen. And by dying, I'm going to prove God wrong. By believing in the fact that I can be threatened in some way that my reality, who I am as God created me, can somehow be threatened. When in fact, what I am seeing as my reality is not a reality at all. Because... I think it can be threatened because I think it is finite, that it, that it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. God's love and God's will, which created us, has no beginning, has no middle, has no end. There's only a now. There's only a now. Now, in... Although this is in next week's paragraphs, I, there's one thing I, I highlighted that I'd like to read really quick here. And this is, uh, this is in the second sentence of the, of the next paragraph. There is no gain at all to me in this. There is no gain at all to be. To me. To me. To me in, in this. this. Mm -hmm. I, I have nothing in reality. I have nothing to gain by seeing myself as sick. I see myself as dying, poor, destitute, lonely, all those horrible adjectives that we use to define ourselves as the lonely ego. I, my, the way I put it is, this is not worthy of the Holy Son of God. And when I come upon a thought like that, and I start fuging on it, and I start holding it in my head, and worrying about it, I, I, when I, if, I, if I could snap out of it enough and say to myself, this, is not, this thought is not worthy of the Holy Son of God. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. <laughs> and by understanding that that is, the, that is as close to the truth as I can come in this dream, by realizing that this is not worthy, although I may not be seeing myself, as the Holy Son of God, I can understand that whatever this is that I'm fuging on, that is not worthy of the true definition of the Holy Son of God. Because sickness is not worthy of the Holy Son of God. Loneliness is not worthy. Death, despair, uh, distance, time, all of these things that I think seem to define myself as the ego's version of the Son of God, all those things are not worthy of the true version of the Son of God. So there is no gain at all to me in this, in this idea of death. There's, I don't gain anything by that, except the ego gets to prove itself, quote unquote, that it is more powerful than God is. And I don't know what, I can't imagine what the advantage of that is. I can't, it doesn't make any sense. And that, that is what, when I started reading the course 20,000 years ago or whatever it was, I started reading that. I started, and I started going, wait a minute. All these things that I've been thinking about as being quote real, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I, why would I want that? Why would I want that? Anybody else have any thoughts about that? The ego says we die, but in truth, oh. ah. it's just my body. I existed before and I exist after, so relax. Right. <laughs> exactly. And the body itself is part of that dream that thinks it dies. The body is part of the dream that thinks it dies. In fact, it is the embodiment of that dream. 
there's if if the if we were not sitting here right now thinking in some part of our ego my egoic mind that the body is going to die eventually there would be no need for this dream there would be no need for this illusion there would be no need for this perception at all if we hadn't the thought that the body is going to die and that that is that is a limitation on god's love by not enjoying and i use that in quotes enjoying that thought the ego has no weapon the ego has no basis the ego the ego has no anchor in time because if i truly understand that the body which seems like it's going to die is not part of god's will what what uh, what is what is left of this dream what is left of this perception if i don't have the idea that there is a finite definition to this self small cat small else self if i am holding on the idea that i have no limitations in time in space in truth in love i have no limitations whatsoever what good is this illusion what good is this per- this perception none it has no perception whatsoever there is no gain at all to me in this if i truly understand and truly and i don't even want to use the word belief because this is if this goes beyond belief this goes to the idea of true reality true reality that there is no weapon called death there is no weapon called time there is no weapon called space all of those things that we seem to think separate us from our father they do not exist <clears throat> because all the only thing i have is right here right now no then no when okay anybody else have anything to say please i'm come talking way too much today sorry i think for me the challenge is is because i i still have a belief that i'm a body and all i experience i experience through the body to grasp the concept that i am as god created me and to be worthy of this is is a challenge i've been mulling it over in my head mulling it over in my head and and that sentence where it says you know it's the defiance manifested it's like oh yeah well, that makes sense it makes sense I, i that makes sense to me but i don't want to be defiant i want to i want to serve god i want to be as god created me but i, I get distracted by by my experiences and right. how do i let go of all those illusions that i can mentally say our illusions and really grasp that i am already as god created me and already. god created me as holy and free and you know happy and healthy and joyful and mm-hmm. and and that's where my conflict is that's where i i'm spinning my wheels and I, and i'm ready to let it go but how do i let it go <laughs> well the idea those those words you've said happy holy free all those other things those do not happen in this body those are not part of the reality of this or the perceived reality of this body the only perceived reality that i have of this body is lack sickness death loneliness all the things that keep me from ad, from admitting that i have everything because god that's what god's will is yeah. happiness health eternity all those things those do not happen in the perception of this body but they do no they do not no, they, they do not because they have because i'm sorry to, to disagree with you but they, they have all those things are limitless they are eternal and anything that i seem to think i can think i am am happy but in an instant that happiness can disappear i can think i have unhappiness can disappear but the, i experience the inner soul the happiness experience in this body you are I may, if i might suggest 
if you are doing that, you are experiencing the true love of God, which has nothing to do with this body. God's truth, God's love is eternal. Yes. And any and any time that I'm trying to anchor any of those things in the finite. I'm not I'm, anchoring, I'm experiencing. Same, I'm using that as the same word. Anytime that I think I'm experiencing that in this body, I'm saying, I'm putting it in a jar, screwing the top cap on, but the jar is glass and all I have to do is let go of it and drop some breaks. If I, if but it's I, not limited through this skin and flesh. It's no, there. it has, has nothing to do with skin and flesh. Nothing whatsoever. Right. So if I am, ex if I see myself as experiencing true, infinite love, that has nothing to do with what I am perceiving here. The perception of love in this world is anchored in the perception of the ego. And it will eventually disappear. That does, that, that's not to say that, that I shouldn't enjoy those moments of love, those moments of joy, those moments of <clears throat> eternal bliss that I think I'm experiencing here. I'm just saying that, all, that if I want to really hold on to the reality of those, all those things, I don't anchor it in this world. Okay, I'm hearing you and I'm asking. Yes. The fact that I'm happy to, I experience pleasure and happiness seeing all of you and being part of this. Are you telling me I'm not experiencing that? I'm, no. No, I'm not no, saying the that body, at all. The body is a receiving, uh, transmitting uh, device. <laughs> who, who we really are, which is spirit. And that's right. where the happiness comes from. That's where the joy comes from, that connection. Your heart, which is love. Because yeah, love is all there is. God is all there is. That's what we're tapping into. We and are helpable. The, the purpose that the purpose we are, are serving right here, right now. The, the group of us here on the screen, the purpose we are serving is the ability to make one step closer to the infinity of God's love. The infinity is, that's, that's it. Okay. We, the, the, I'm not saying that what we are doing here is useless. In fact, we are here because we are teachers of God. We are here willing to teach and learn the, the satisfaction of God's love. And we will continue to move closer and closer and closer to that until at some point I say to myself, ah, this, all this other stuff I see is not worthy of the Son of God. The only thing that's worthy of the Son of God is that which I am willing to take one step more, one step closer to. I am willing to take the final step toward the love of God, which will, in result, release myself from the ego's version of it. That is not death. That is not, that is not anything that can be defined in this existence. It is outside of this existence, ex outside of this existence. And like the first paragraph, in the, on the first page of the course says, we are not here to, to learn love because that is not something that can be taught. But we are here to learn how to remove the obstacles to the presence of love. I think it's to the awareness of love's awareness. presence. Thank you, yes, okay. Thank you very much, yes. Which makes a lot more sense. We are here to learn how not to fear. We are here to learn how to set down the idea of separation from God. And by doing all that, we make ourselves aware of what God's love truly is. And we take that final step on 
Jesus refers to it many different ways. There's the veil, the bridge, the path, all these things. The final step we take, we say, we take forward and we say, okay, my father, I am ready. Take me. And this, and God the Father reaches out and pulls us in in that last step, which, and that last step is what the reason, what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is all about. The Holy Spirit is the gift that the, our Father gave us when we decided to play this little game. And in the end, Holy Spirit's purpose, when that happens, the Holy Spirit's purpose has no purpose anymore because there is no need to translate God's love. There is no need to see God's love as something that I don't understand, that I need to seek. I am here now on that final step, well, ready to say, okay, I understand this. All of this before is not something that is worthy of God's love and not worthy of, the, of God's salvation and not worthy of the, the worthy of the Son of God. I am right here, right now, experiencing that which is not worthy of the Son of God. There is no gain at all to me in this. And if I just keep saying that over and over and over again, no matter what it is, whether it whether it's, seems to be defined as good or bad, remember, definitions are something that, that I give. I give to anything that I perceive. I perceive good. I perceive bad. In fact, there is no meaning whatsoever. They have no meaning whatsoever in anything. A billion dollars in my hand or cancer in my body, they are all, both things that I define myself as mm -hmm. being good or bad. They are in truth meaningless in God's love. God's love does not judge. God's love does not define anything in this world because God's love has nothing to do with what we are perceiving in this world. We can step closer and closer to love, but in fact, I do not need anything in this world to be experiencing God's love. I do not need that. Anything I experience in this world is not worthy of the Son of, the son of God. It's like the prodigal son going off and doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. But eventually, as we as the prodigal, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, <coughs> as we as the prodigal son move further and further away from the riches of the father by spending it, by wasting it, by gambling it, by you know whatever this in the parable, whatever the prodigal son does, as we move further and further away from that, we start to realize how much value our father's love really has towards us. And I go, I'm, I'm penniless. I am absolutely distraught and destitute without my father's love. It is now time for me to return to that. I will go back to my father's home. And although I don't actually expect him to kill the fatted calf or anything like that, um, there will be, there is great joy in our father's love an expression when he sees that I, as his, as his perfectly created child, am willing to understand that there is nothing here that is going to solve the problem of my sense of lack. There's nothing here that is going to relieve the burden of constantly having to judge, constantly. Mm -hmm. this is good this is bad this is that hey i'm exhausted i'm i'm just i'm worn out i really am and and i think that the idea that i am worn out in the body sense is is it's a problem because i'm seeing myself as being a victim of that and 
the I'm seeing myself being a victim of my quote job here in this dream. Now, I think that in the end that could be that could be a good thing. I could I think that in the end my feeling of exhaustion and having to constantly play this game might be one thing that takes me one step closer to that. But I've got to stop seeing myself as being a victim of this world. Does this person love me? Does this person hate me? Is this good to eat? Is this going to poison me? Um, is it too dark? Is it too light? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Is it, oy, oy vey. It's just like, it's, it's like, really? Why am, I, why am I doing myself to this? Well, the reason why is because I have decided that I have to defeat God to prove him wrong. And the only way I could do that is to kill this. To kill this either in body or spirit, or small s spirit, or mind, or health, or in, in, in finite existence. All of those things are things that I'm using, tools that I'm using to create the idea that I am somehow more powerful than God. And if, and if not that, at least that I am somehow separate from God. And if I can be separate from God, that makes me more powerful than God. That's what, that's what the ego is trying to prove. And that's what the well, ego Maybe thinks. it's time to leave the ego and move beyond that because I, that's yes. all downer for me and I don't believe that. Uh, okay, well then, well, that, is, that is the first step, leaving the ego but not seeing ourselves as being a victim of the ego. Just understanding that the purpose, that I, the purpose of the ego is to make us believe in the separation. Not to make it real, just to make us believe in it. That the ego is saying, look, I'm not asking for much. Just believe well, what I'm As long doing. as we're giving a discussion and, and power, and we're giving power to the ego right now, I think. That, that can be. That can in be, this discussion. Right. I, like I, that. I, like I understand. I understand because we are, we are, we keep telling the story of our, we keep telling the story of our imprisonment. But if you don't define it, it's hard to see what, which one is ruling. Okay. You know, which wolf am I feeding? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know, yeah. Well, if you, if you go through, if you have an electronic version of the, of the course, if you go through and look up the word jailed or jail or jailer, we are, the, the ego wants us to be the jailer. It says, I'm going to give you the keys to this jail, but I want you to keep this world jailed up. That's your job. The trouble is, is that the jail the ego is also our jailer if he's trying to keep us in well, that position. Exactly that. Exactly that. And so the problem is that the jailer is as much a prisoner as the jail is. <laughs> if I am trying to keep my brother, who I am seeing before me in my storefront, if I am here trying to keep my brother jailed up to see, see that there's something wrong with him, that he sees himself as being um, wrong in something. I am as much in the prison as the jail, as the, the, the client is. So my purpose in being the owner, the, the operator of the storefront is to understand that not only is my brother not guilty, not only is my brother can my brother be set free by forgiveness? I myself have to be set free through forgiveness. That is, that is the sickness that the ego is keeping us prisoner in. Sickness is the, the healing that needs to happen is, the, is in the sick, curing the sickness, healing the sickness of the idea that I am somehow a prisoner. There must be a better way. Finally, I finally get to put that in there. There it is. 
There Amen. is a better way. There is a better, a way. better way. And the way there is, is way. forgiveness. But remember, our the, the client comes to us not knowing that. The client comes to us saying, mm. I'm so upset. I don't know what's going on. There must be a better way. That's our job as store, our storefront operators to show the person that they have the key to the jail in the palm of their hand. And all they have to do, the key is called forgiveness. And forgiveness, the key, the key is forgiveness. The lock in the, joy, in the jailer's door is called salvation. And all I have to do is see my brother, my client, as healed, whole, and loved by God. And then show him that whatever problem he thinks he's having in this world, in this illusion, the only thing that needs to happen is for that is for the client to see themselves as healed, whole, and loved. And if I am truly loved, how can I possibly be attacked? How can I possibly need anything other than or let me say that again. How can I be anything other than be anything other than healing? I am healing. Because I have put myself in the doorway to the store. I am proof that there is a better way. And the closer I come to that realization, the further away I move from being the prisoner in the ego's jail. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Do we have more reading? Uh, no, that, I, I, that's, that's that enough. Be- We're going to go on with the second, with the other paragraphs in the next week. Um, excuse me a second. I've talked so much, I've dried my mouth out. I'll, I'll, I'll talk for a minute. Oh, mm. is my... Am I muted? Mm. No, okay, wait, we, we can hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, here's what I'm, I'm thinking. If I'm remembering correctly, I think there's a lesson in the course, and I don't know what number it is, but it happens in the summer sometime. And it, <laughs> it really very beautifully, you know, talks about this idea of being in the jail and then having to, you know, be the jailer as well. Um, so that's coming up in the summer. The other thing, Leslie, when you were talking, you really um, touched my heart because I fully understand what you were what you were getting at, and um, you know, I I'm I'm going through a similar thing where I. Oh, gosh. It is hard to say, and you were so brave, and you put it so beautifully. Um, can you just, can you synopsize real quickly, for, and for the others too, so they know what I'm talking about, but maybe they remember, but just again, in a, in a bit, tell me the gist of what you were talking about, your experience. That my... Um... My cancer, my whatever's gone on with my body has been an excuse to not participate. Participate. To be able to say no. Yeah, Yeah, that's to be able to say no. Yeah, that that is a beautiful synopsis. So what what I've been discovering of late within the last almost two years, where I know full well I don't have cancer but I do have a super, what I call challenge, an emotional challenge regarding my son, his decisions. Yeah. And, and I, I have kind of, you know, um, made an analogy that I am like, I feel like I've had both of my arms cut off, you know, like double amputation. Now that hasn't happened, but it, it has felt like that, like I'm hemorrhaging and then of course, you know, scabs form. And, and then, you know, very often, you know, I'd wake up in the morning and I would feel, damn, that scab, somebody ripped it off in the night and it's hemorrhaging again. 
of course I don't have this, you know, but it's felt like that. Mm -hmm. And then I've realized that, you know, for whatever reason, I am being given the gift of this time, this time to myself where I don't have my son, I don't have his girlfriend. I used to spend a lot of time with them. And so I've been, you know, my, I have some wonderful friends who've wanted to get together and, and, and I, I've had this deep realization that I'm not ready and that I need more time. I need more alone time. Mm. And I'm okay. I'm so clear now about, mm. you know, letting somebody know that thank you so much for reaching out to me. And I, I would be so happy to talk on the phone, but I can't see you in person. I can't go for a walk. I can't go out to a restaurant for a coffee, et cetera, because it, I'm not ready. Mm. I'm, I'm still in some kind of healing process where I require great amounts of solitude. I, I'm so grateful for this group. I, I require, mm. you know, contact with others who are on this path. And I so appreciate all of you. Mm. Thank you for the heart. I still don't know how to do that. <laughs> Down at the bottom of your screen where it says reactions. <laughs> How do I get there though? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Got See where I it says before. Oh yeah. There, there, they, there they are. There's our heart. Feeling um, like a tech whiz now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, you go, girl. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> Mary, um it, oh, uh, can, can I be can I be a little on the blunt side here? Yeah. Okay what you are experiencing what i hear you experiencing is fear i'm not ready okay i feel as though i can't i can't do this alone well the fact of the matter is you're not doing it alone doing going out and meeting friends for for a lunch taking a walk driving to another place to visit a friend all those things can be done with everything that you have right here, right now. Because I, all you all you need is to admit to yourself that you are the perfectly created child of God. Yeah. And there is no argument that can be that can say otherwise, except what the ego wants to say. You are the jailed and the jailer in these thoughts. And all you have to do is take the key of forgiveness, stick it in the lock of salvation, turn it, and you're going to realize, as it has said in dozens of places in the course, the door was never locked. And that's and so the the ego has decided that the best way to keep you under its control is to keep you isolated from your friends. And, and that Baraka, I should, I shouldn't have made it. And maybe I dramatized it because I'm not isolated. I no, go no. out, you know, I do things. I, I go every Thursday and do a beautiful sing along music group in a nursing home. I, I do see certain people. I do go to lunch with certain people. I, I did recently. I'm just realizing that there's a certain quality that I can, you know, participate in a kind of a, what, what it's it's like people that I can be completely myself with you bet I'm there but there's a whole part of our experience as human beings where we have to show up kind of in the costume and kind of play the part be at the cocktail party you know how are you doing great how are you how are your kids all mm -hmm. that I can't you know that's stuff that I'm not either interested in right now or you know, wanting to participate in. So I'm not unhappy in any way with this situation. In fact, I'm very grateful. I, you know, I, I think it is one of the great gifts that I'm receiving. It's this gift of clarity of what is right for me and what is not right. So what's po authentic? Po possibly, possibly these, these 
people that you're saying I'm not ready for, I'm not ready to, I, 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 I maybe they just are not. And, and again, the course speaks about this a lot where eventually certain people in our lives fall away. Yeah. Because we are, no, we are no longer, they're no longer on perceived as being on the same path that we are. And it's a lot easier to maintain the truth of my path than to try to convince someone else to walk on that path with me. Yeah. Because that doesn't work. The only way it works is for that person to step forward and say, there must be a better way. Ah, now I can show you the key to the door because you have asked me. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't feel as though I have to attack you with my spirituality. Yeah. And, and if, they, if they fall aside, they fall aside. Yeah. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're right. Not, you know, you're not ghosting them. You're just saying, I'm, I'm just, it's just not, it's just not where I am right now. Right. And so don't, don't try to make up an excuse for not saying them. Be no. truthful about that. Yeah. Just simply be truthful. Yeah. And be true. And, and also with the, the, the clients that we see that might be a little hesitant about coming into the storefront, <coughs> excuse me, we be truthful about why you are there. I am here only to be truly helpful. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And if, and if at the moment you are experiencing fear and, and how can I help you? How may I helpful? help you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how is it possible to express love to you and really help you um i don't want relieve is not the right word but i can't think of another word relieve the this burden of judgment upon you how may i do that how may i assist you here's the key here's the lock let's turn it together it has been kind of interesting, Baraka, that a few people, maybe two or three, have come into or back into my life kind of surprisingly and delightfully, you know, and and what you said is happening. There's a real, it's a back and forth uh, helping each other through, you know, and, and, and it's a surprise to me, you know, these were people that I knew in the past and, and have loved, but have uh, grown apart from mm -hmm. and for some weird reason weird reason you know okay they have <laughs> <laughs> they've popped back in and one you know she makes a point every monday morning she'll say may i call you later this morning and i you know i say oh of course and i'm most sweet so happy and i'm so touched that she wants to spend time with me you know and mm. and we have this weekly chat it's it's a remarkable surprise to me, really, and, and, and very welcome. God's love should not be surprising. You are completely worthy of it. We all are. We are completely worthy of God's love because it has already been given. And by having these, quote, miracles happen, and remember, um, the holiest place on earth is where a past hatred or dissolution or distance or, or anything becomes a current love, a present love. We mm -hmm. are here to open the gates to present love. And every time we do that, we open, we, we move aside another layer of that veil that is somehow hiding God's love from us, hiding our home in heaven with God from us. I want all of us to be a facilitator in my approach to your, to your storefront. I want all of you to be my great teacher in this. Remember last week when we talked about, uh, talked about teachers and pupils, the pupil is here to teach the teacher. The teacher is here to, to teach the pupil. We are all equal in God's love. And we are all provided the presence of ourselves in God's love. It is with God's love that we admit 
the teacher before us. Whether, the, whether it looks like a student or not, we are all teachers in God's love. And that is where I... That, that is where I think I will, I will end this today. Please, please remember uh, please remember. I guess that's, that's what I wanted to say. Please remember. Okay? Be worthy of God's love. Everything that I experience oh and by the way it's lesson 191 is the, 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 is the, the quote about the jailer. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to check oh, that out. I like yeah. that one. 191, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good one. It is. It's a whopping good one. Um, <laughs> the idea that I am here to learn from you all is a profound gift to me. That I thank am, you. I am, pro it is a profound gift that I have been given to remember that idea. Thank you all very, very much. If I, had, okay. if I had two hands, I'd be doing the namaste, but I only have one hand because I'm holding my phone. One, one is enough. Good. That's one why is, I always go like, I go like this. One is, one. that's a whole, a whole heart, right? It's a whole heart. Right. right. Well, you your hand is one half heart and your whole, your heart is the other heart. Other yeah. Half. All right. I try to put it on a background. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Please, please. I, I would like very much for other people to start enjoying us. Um, if you know anyone who thinks that this might be the next step for them towards the storefront, please invite them to join us. Please if, send them, forward them the email that I send you guys. Um, send them the link to the, the, the YouTube page that, so they can see other things that we've done in the past. And I look forward next, next week to finding out more about how healing can be accomplished. Thank you all very, very much. I love Thanks. you all. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 one more thing. One bye more bye. thing. Oh. Hold on, hold on. One more thing. I have a funeral to go to. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read this to just, just myself. Oh, yes. Okay? Let's read let, this. Let, let, me just, let me just read this all by myself here. What am I? I am God's son, complete and healed and whole, shining in the reflection of his love. In me is his love, is his creation sanctified and guaranteed eternal life. In me is love perfected, fear impossible, and joy established without opposite. I am the holy home of God himself. I am the heaven where his love resides. I am his holy sinlessness, sinlessness itself, for in my purity abides his own. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. 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 <laughs> I love you all very much. Thank you. Love you all. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I'll be here next Saturday. It's uh, my birthday. Okay. It's your birthday? Next Saturday. Yeah. Happy okay. early birthday. Yeah, happy Thank birthday you. then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.